Ooh, ooh. Ooh, he's a squeak. Get trying to nurse inside Julie's ear. So let's see, I'll give you the recap. Um, um, so recap is uh, Sloney um, and I had a little standoff over the last couple days uh, in the cabinet of solitude and so I wasn't able to access the kittens to do feeding and eye meds and stuff. Um, and I had the plan A was a gradual uh, weaning plan that I started last week, um, easing them into digesting food, smooshy food, from canned food basically. Kitten gruel. <laughs> You're so cute. You're so cute. I don't know. Um, and so, uh, my plan is sort of, oh no, oh dear me, you just go for a swim, oh so brave, let me help you, let me help you, oh my goodness, that's terribly embarrassing, um, oh look, Jeannie's gonna have some water, she just can't quite figure out that the water's inside, there you go, I know. Jimmy's gonna drink some water. That's a good sign. Um, so, um, so since Sloan is scheduled for her spay on Thursday, early Thursday morning, so we don't have that much time left, um, I uh, I separated them so that for a couple of reasons so that I could definitely have access to the kittens because Katie uh, still needs eye drops for sure in one of her eyes and um, also so that I could make sure that the kittens were um, eating enough because uh, if you look at the weight chart there haven't been very big gains um, and so I can make sure that they're all gaining properly. Um, Junebug in particular has been, has not gained in more days than I would like if you look at the numbers. Um, so she 
well, I'll, I'll weigh her before I feed her today, but she gained quite a bit already today, just having, just being supplemented. So, a um, couple of, and then also because I don't want Sloney to be spayed and then become engorged with milk because she hasn't been um, able to taper off the weaning gradually. So, um, the way to jumpstart the milk drying up is by separating her from the babies. Um, technically, it should be for 24 hours um, with a slightly calorie restricted diet. Um, and that signals to the body to stop producing milk. Um, if the kittens are nursing, then that will stimulate more milk production. So um, I am going to try to hold out 24 hours. Um, but I'm also monitoring Sloane just to make sure she's not um, in there worried or becoming frantic. So far, she's been fine. She's been, she's had a, a kind of stressful couple of days, um, and so she's having a little vacation from the human contact. And so she's actually just been in there sleeping, and she actually was at the windowsill, which is a good sign. So I think she's she's definitely doing fine. So as long as that continues, and as long as they're gaining weight and everything. Um, I'm going to try to hold out for the entire 24 hours and hope that that results in her milk supply beginning to dry up so that after her stay, the, re the risk of mastitis is uh, much lower. Hi Katie, let's see how you're doing. So I'm still trying to get these guys to eat on their own. Well, your eye looks good right now. Yes, it does. Um, they're still resisting for the most part. Um, Eve's kittens were already eating like little, I don't know what, little piglets at this stage. So um, they're physiologically totally capable of it. It's just whether they want to. And they don't want to, they haven't decided that they want to just yet, so um, that is the, the goal at this stage is A, to get them enough nutrition that they're gaining weight, and B, encourage them to eat on their own, so that's why I didn't uh, just transition them directly to a bottle. Um, I usually try to give them a, a syringe a little bit via syringe to give them a taste for the food and then try to and then hope that they will that will motivate them to eat more food on their own but so far they have not taken the bait they have continued to thwart me but hopefully it will happen now that was not an excuse to just go and eat me so You two are just so darling. Junie. So let's see. All right, so if I miss your questions, just repeat them and I'll try to get everything. So um, I will bottle supplement if if I need to, um, I would, they're old enough to not need a bottle. They should be able to eat on their own, but um, like I said, they have not been super motivated to do that as yet. Um, Cause I don't necessarily want to get them transitioned to a bottle, which takes some work and then just have to transition them to food after that. It's kind of an, it's kind of an unnecessary step at this point, but I'll do it if I need to. Um, every single litter of kittens that I've had has nursed till the day they've gone for adoption. Um, the only time that that doesn't happen is like when I had the Roundup kittens and it was grandma, two moms, and well, and they had three litters of kittens, and the grandmother of the group 
just decided she was done and so there was no more access to the milk bar but um if mom will allow it the kittens will nurse until forever if you if you watch during the dancing kittens um calypso and tango tango was calypso's kitten from a previous litter she was about six months old and she she tried she was still trying to nurse which mama didn't super appreciate being gigantically pregnant So Cricket tries to nurse on anything, anyone and anything. Um, so good question, EG, what happens after 24 hours? Um, so if I was able to, ideally what you would do is then um, do like supervised feeding times. Like she would get, they would get like six 20 minute feeding feedings with mom throughout the day so that, um, So that it would continue to, there would be a, a less in demand on the milk. Um, but so so, depending on how things go, I am contemplating just putting two back in there. The 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 unknown is that I don't know when I put them back in there if if she's going to let me have them back again. So that's what that's what's a little bit tricky. But I don't want to keep her three more days on her own because I don't think she would appreciate that. Um, so I'm just going to see how it goes. I may, I may put two of the kittens back tonight with her and just, and that will, that will lessen the, the demand for milk. Um, and then I can make sure I get meds into Katie and um, enough food into Junie. Speaking of Junie. So a lot of this is just, um, you just have to be super observant about what's going on and kind of make up the plan and change the plan as you go based on, a lot of it is gut feeling and a lot of it is just evaluating the, what's the lowest risk, high benefit, highest benefit plan. 393, ooh, that's so good. Good job, Jimmy. So Judy's doing really well with the supplemental feedings. So it kind of also tells me, looking at the weight chart, and because the weight gains haven't been super significant, um, I suspect that Sloane may not be producing a ton of milk because she's been in there with them quite a bit. Um, so it's possible her production is already slowing down. Um, Although these guys have not been seeking out food, certainly, so it's, and it's hard to tell without being able to actually feel what's going on down there, but um, it's unusual that she would be spending so much time with them and then, and they would be nursing, but they still wouldn't be gaining weight if they're healthy, which they are. Otherwise, they're totally healthy. All right, Junie. Oh. But June, Junie gained uh, 15 grams this is her, her third feeding today and she's gained 15 grams just after the second feeding she had gained 15 grams and whereas she didn't gain anything the last three days and she's sort of been like she hit 372 on May 29th and then she's been like she dropped a bunch and then she was back up but her weight's been not super, not what I like to see. Um, so does being stressed cause milk production to go down? Um, it certainly could. I don't know that there's any documentation of that, but um, stress certainly has any number of um, negative side effects, um, which is one of the reasons that I'm trying to figure out how, like what things add stress and what things reduce stress. So, so that we can reduce stress if we're fostering ferals and hopefully have a better chance of positive outcomes. 
and I would definitely consider this a positive outcome so far because mom and babies are all healthy and I still have all of my fingers and toes and oh. right big boy the big boy is not impressed with the syringe or the bottle so if they were like three weeks old or less I would definitely just put them right on the bottle um, because that's what would be best for them 502 good job buddy <laughs> thank you Lynette and Lynette's mom hi Pat thanks for watching uh, let's see so badger What do you think? I've tried food on finger. I've tried basically all of the usual tricks to get them interested. They're pretty resistant. Badger is the most resistant of all. He's very tough. He's way too tough for humans. Yep. The longer they're with Sloney, the more they will learn from her that humans are bad. So. Um, you can see they're pretty good. They're pretty good with me now. Um, they're scared of like being picked up is something we need to work on. Certainly upside down time. They had their first nail clippings today. They did great. Um, it is certainly possible that Sloane is going into heat again. Definitely. I haven't seen uh, any signs of that. She's been pretty quiet today. I would expect her to be kind of a bit more vocal, but um, it's hard to say. Well, Mr. Badger, let's see if you want bottle gruel. Oh, bottle gruel is so tasty. It's so tasty. Where are you going? He's trying to back out of it. There you go. Oh, but it's so tasty. <laughs> He is not having it. Oh, Badger. Just, oh. Badger is totally built like a badger, too. He's like stocky and giant and stubborn. Totally having none of it. Resistance to food uh, has happened in all of my litters except for Eve's. Eve's were the only ones I've had that have just been like, hey, food, awesome. So I was, I was hoping that, that would, it would be great if that would happen with these guys, but no such luck. What? Not into it. Oh, but you're so cute. Oh, you're so adorable. What about kibbles? Do you want one kibble? Maybe you're more of a kibble guy. Don't spit it out. Mm -hmm. very clear about his feelings. Oh, he's a big boy. Big and independent. Oh, hi, Cricket. Oh, you're so cute. Oh. Oh, okay. Do you want to try some bottle food? I haven't seen Sloane looking for the kittens at all. I've seen, uh, I've just seen her, and I ha you you guys would have heard her calling if she was calling for them. Um, I think she's just been like resting, and well, every time I've checked on her, she's been resting. 
And she was on the windowsill too, which is, I think, a good sign. You're very soft. Oh, uh, what do I do since Badger won't eat? Um, oh, well, I can, I, I can definitely syringe feed him. He just resists. He just isn't like, yum, this is the most amazing thing that has ever happened to me. So I'll just give him the syringe. Wait. Cricket and Junie and um, Katie have all sort of like shown the slightest bit of interest in the, in the syringe. Um, but he just fights it because he's a big tough man. He's big and tough and he just wants his mama's milk bar. Sloney is in the room. The kittens are in a box outside of the room. So we feed them every, this is the third feeding today since I guess around, what time did I move them? It was around one, one-ish maybe? Are you a Katie did? Um, so they eat frequently, but pretty small meals, so it's not that difficult to get uh, the right amount of food into them. And I don't think they're actually very hungry, because I have been feeding them a lot. but I'm still going to keep feeding them. Yep. It's so yummy. That's yeah. And she may chase them off at that point because she's got to focus. Good girl, Junie. girl. So I'm trying, I'm trying to give Junie some bottle. Just for, just because if she did decide to take the bottle, it would be a nice fast way to deliver the food. She's the one I want to make sure gets the most food. Um, why does sometimes she let me take the kittens and other times not? Um, that's a good question too. Um, if you notice, the, the only time she doesn't let me take kittens is when they are with her in the cabinet of solitude. There's something about the cabinet that makes her either feel more confident or uh, more vulnerable. And so she stays and protects the kittens. So I don't know if it's because that's her safe, her safe place, the place where she, it's kind of like her measure of last resort. And if I breach her safe place, she doesn't feel that she has anywhere safe to go. So she has to then stay and fight. I think I, that's what, kind of what I suspect is going on, um, which is why when the kittens are elsewhere, as long as she doesn't move them into the cabinet, um, uh, or in the in the one in the most recent case, she went into the nest and I hadn't returned all of the kittens, which was kind of a different scenario. Um, because I actually had one of her kittens and he was making noises, trying to get me in trouble. 
Um, but I think it has something to do with uh, how vulnerable she feels. Because her first preference seems to be to, to run, and then if she can't run, she will stay and fight. But it's very stressful for her. Which is helpful. It's, this is all really good learning stuff from, to, for me to observe firsthand kind of what, how, what her reactions are. And if I can orchestrate keeping the kittens in the one nest and keep her cabinet of solitude safe for a safe place for her, it seems to work the best. She's, her poop was normal. She was pretty like cool about letting me in and out. So really the, the, the thing that kicked off all of this was Badger when I uh, brought him back out here on his own and then she went in the nest while I still had him and then I went back into the room to return him and then uh, she didn't like that because he was making noises so I put him down and then he opted to go to the cabinet of solitude and do a little exploring and that's how she ended up uh, moving them all into the cabinet. Very exciting. Um, do I think Eve will let these guys nurse? Um, that's a tough one. I don't know. Um, it's hard when kittens are older to convince moms to take on other kittens, especially if there's an age difference, which there is with these guys. Um, but she still has them. She still has her own kittens, so it's very possible that she will. Um, I, it, it all depends on on how she reacts. I don't. I'm not banking on it 100%. So, um, it may. She may not accept them at all. It's just um, we're just gonna have to wait and see how it goes. Um, I, I think it would be much nicer for them if she did, or if she at least tolerated them. Um, they're not going to move in with the palindromes until we get a negative uh, feline leukemia FIV test and um, Katie needs probably another couple of days of uh, eye drops just to make sure that they're not going to spread anything. Um, because her, her eye got a little goopy because I wasn't able to do meds for a couple days, so. Ooh, good job, Junie. Okay. Um, I am doing potty duty, although they are old enough that they should be able to do it on their own for the most part. Um, 400, yay, Junie. Junie hit 400. Good job. That's good here. You're done. They have not pooped. Um, Sloney has been doing a phenomenal job with potty duties because I there have been like no accidents that I've seen. And they didn't even really have to pee when I first took, took them, so. I haven't had any poop yet though, but that is, I am in charge of that, yes. Uh, test results will be same day, so uh, that's going to happen on Thursday. So we'll know on Thursday, like Thursday morning probably, well, yeah, probably Thursday morning we'll know. So potentially kittens could be combined on Thursday. What? Sloney has done an she's been amazing. She's been she's done much better than any of the other ones that we've tried to foster and um She's, she's, yeah, she's done great. She's taken great care of them. She hasn't been overly aggressive. Um, 
She's done a really great job. I'm very proud of her. Uh, sedation process for Sloan. Yeah, so 4.15 for Cricket. Oh, that's good. See, that's good. 10 grams up for Cricket. Um, so I'm going to put a little sedative in some tuna for Sloan. Um, and I'll just put it inside the door so that she eats it and the kittens won't have a chance of eating it. Um, and then it should work within an hour. And uh, I don't think it will knock her out. I think it just makes her kind of um, happy. And then I should be able to use, I have something called an easy nabber that's like a net sort of thing that just I can just pick her up with it um, and put her into a crate. And then um, once we get to Mountain View, then they'll give her the real, the real stuff. So uh, it it isn't something that will interfere with the anesthesia or anything that Dr. Ferguson will need to do for her. It's just something that will hopefully relax her enough that I can get her into a crate without um, without it being super stressful. And then she'll have her first and last vet exam. Once she's out, she'll get a full exam, and then they'll draw blood for feeling leukemia, FIV tests, and what else? Um, you know, check, they do a thorough exam, so they'll check everything on her. Good job, Miss Cricket. Yeah, so we don't, um, so, like, I wouldn't return her to the kittens after her spay. Um, I will most likely be returning her uh, in the late afternoon on Thursday, um, unless it seems like she would do better with a night of recovery, but the problem with doing that <laughs> is that uh, I would have to release her, and then I would have to re-catch her. And um, with a new spay incision, and I don't know if I could give her the, the sedative again two days in a row, so I think that would be traumatic and potentially, you know, do something to her incision. So I think it would be better to take her back on the same day. Um, but if even if I did keep her here for another day or two to recover, um, I would not put the babies with her because I wouldn't want them nursing. Uh, because she'll have been on anesthetic and pain meds and all sorts of stuff. Um, if she has other problems um, that we can treat easily, we'll treat them. Um, we There's no way for us to have the opportunity to treat her regularly for something, so there's not a lot we can do. Um, she seems pretty healthy to me. Um, I don't have any concerns and and this whole process has been something that has exerted a lot of stress on her and so any major um, issues that she might have uh, I would expect them to have surfaced um, just just as a byproduct of the stress of um, you know being in captivity and being pregnant and all that stuff so Um, I mean, she could stay all night at Mountain View, but I don't think it would be extremely stressful for her to do that. So I think it would be better to keep her here than keep her at Mountain View. 418. Um, in our experience, the if we keep the cats post-surgery, uh, they don't eat, they don't drink, and they don't go to the bathroom, and it really um, is important for their recovery that they eat and drink um, after surgery. So when we release them in the afternoon 
uh, we can make sure that they get a good meal because we put food at the feeding station and I've, I've waited for, and they, they come back and they eat the food and then they just go and they can recover in a place where they feel they're safe. And so the stress goes away immediately, they eat, they drink, and I mean, there, there is, you know, the risk is that they're going to pull a stitch or, um, you know, get, get it, the incision dirty or something like that. But that risk is so much smaller than the um, harm that's done from not eating and drinking. Okay, big boy. It's your last go around. And we're gonna do some pottying. Oh, he's so ferocious. Um, there are currently pregnant female that we have seen. Um, one, uh, it's Inara. If you want to look her up, um, she had babies on April 7th. So we were holding off on trapping her because um, we can't trap them if they're nursing babies because the babies will not survive. For, for We do have to keep them overnight to fast them before their surgeries. So um, they, would, they end up being gone 24 hours um, and it's unlikely the babies would survive. So we have to kind of try to time it so that we wait till the babies are big enough. but before she's pregnant again. And unfortunately, it seems as if her, she lost her entire litter probably two to three weeks after they were born because she's visibly pregnant again now and it's only, we're at eight weeks today. So, um, and we have no way of knowing that because you know, they, they have their babies, they're having their babies on an area of the property we don't have access to, so um, that part's been a little bit difficult, but um, we are planning to do another round of trapping uh, next week and try to catch some of the females that sh that's baby should be old enough um, and that have not gone into heat again yet. So it's definitely, it's, it's difficult. Um, yeah, and we haven't had any problems reintegrating the uh, moms or the post-surgical cats with the colony. They've all been welcomed back as if they were never gone, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Badger. I feed the Badger because he's a big boy. Yes, kind of like Cork did. Um, Sloane is not getting cal calcium supplements anymore. Um, she doesn't seem to need them. Um, it is uh, it is likely that I will take on another feral mom to be um, because I would like to continue learning. I know that Sloane is. I think well, I know that each each mom is different, and so I. I don't think I can really draw conclusions from one experience, although I have gained quite a bit of insight. Should we try potty first? So I would like to continue doing it and maybe maybe, um, maybe fostering can become a more viable option um, as an alternative to uh, just spaying the pregnant females and writing off the babies. Badger doesn't like potty time. Um, the property owner has been extremely helpful and is uh, is re a really, really nice guy. Um, he just uh, has very, he has very legitimate reasons for not um, granting us full access to the property. But he's been he's been great. He's the one who buried Nash for us um, when someone hit 
he he someone hit he got hit by a car and someone left him on the path. And I actually I found him the day that I was trapping Sloney, so I was like a total weepy mess. And then um, and he he so then he offered to take care of him and he put like a little he made him like a little grave marker and it was very sweet. So he's he's a good guy. He just he has legitimate reasons for um, the situation. Um, I'm not going to keep this forest in the room because I, I need to clean in there thoroughly um, and any future forest will be a fresh forest. Oh, such a squawky, squawky badger. <laughs> Let's see if Jeannie has to go potty. Yeah. Nobody has uh, sponsored Sloney and her litter yet, but um, I did notice several donations came in on PayPal this afternoon um, toward toward uh, spays and neuters and things, um, and I appreciate that very much. Tiny Kittens is funding. Um, we've, we we uh, have our very own account now at Mountain View, and our funding things are able to like fund stuff so um we're doing all the sloney kittens and sloney and doing an ultrasound for one of the other feral kittens and some other stuff like that that um would fall outside of the usual budget stuff um so that's very much appreciated thank you to everybody who has donated today um, it typically costs, uh, if you go to tinykittens.com and you scroll down, you can see how much each litter has cost. Um, it's typically around $2,000 um, to do spays and neuters and food and litter and uh, vaccines and deworming and um, stuff like that. And then whatever else weird stuff like these guys have had to have eye medicine and you're so cute um, things like that so it adds up pretty quickly good job good job little Peter Katie has to go. Yeah, so and if you if they're sick, you know, it can go up pretty quickly. Or like if they need an ultrasound, like the one the one little guy, actually it's kind of an interesting story because he, he has a heart murmur and the only way to really know what his prognosis is is with an ultrasound, but ultrasounds are really expensive. Um but his foster mom um, has stepped forward and said she would adopt him, um, you know, if that was the right, if, if he needed a, a home for however long he has. But they, they, you know, it's a lot of expense to take on. So um, are you going to go potty for me? We've had to do some extra tests on these guys too, like the PCR for the ringworm and um, the PCR for the ringworm and you know stuff like that. So 
It's expensive, but worth it. I, if, so uh, he's getting an ultrasound this week, so I'll, I'll um, share information once, once I have more information and, as long, and I just want to confirm with his foster mom that he, she's okay with that. So, before I give any details. Cricket! Good job. You're very, very brave. Okay. Look at them. Nursing on the rug. Okay. So, oh, you're chewing on your toes. I see. All right. I'm gonna leave the food, the food assortment, in here for them. Take the bottle away. No one wants the bottle. Do another feeding in it's what nine with nine plus four uh one one around one midnight one something like that. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm very pleased with the weight gains. That's all. You're doing great. Uh, I'm just gonna clean up. Um, I may do another feral and non feral at the same time. We'll just have to see how things go. Also uh, working on grants um, for the TNR stuff, so that's a lot of uh, work. But hopefully we'll get one. Um, but so far, still in the application process. Let's see. I think that's everything. Oh, you're so cute. Um, I have a cam on Sloan. It's it's only for me. Um, but I did show earlier. I did show it. Uh, so a few people, well, whoever was watching at the last meeting got to see. So uh, she's not in her cabinet right now. But next time if she's in the cabinet, I'll show you. going to ease right now because um, we go from clean to dirty and so uh, I always go from Eves to these guys um, so I'm going to have to wash my hands uh, a few more times and make sure that I'm super clean before I go back into Eves 
Oh, eats can block by a tent. All right, maybe I'll go fix the tent situation. But I'm not gonna touch kittens. situation is fixed. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll, I'll do more Q&A next time. And now uh, lights out. So adorable. Oops. <laughs>